Mars Dune Alpha How to live on Mars for a year Have you ever had aspirations to live somewhere in the universe or going into space? I recall that as a young child, I would frequently sing Elton John's Rocket Man or David Bowie's Starman. And I once fantasized about being the first guy to walk on the moon or another planet. As I became older, I came to the conclusion that it might never happen. The good news is that Mars is calling. Well, actually, it isn't the planet phoning at all. NASA is looking for candidates to join the crew of the first analog expedition, which will imitate living on an alien planet for a year and start in the autumn of 2022. Do you desire more information on it? Then purchase some popcorn and watch the entire video. The astronaut experience will fundamentally change when NASA expands its planetary missions. It will be significantly different from living on Earth to live somewhere else. Scientists must be ready for even the most unlikely accidents. And the more you consider it, the more you see that unpredictability is the key. No matter how hard you try to forecast reality, you will always be surprised, as we already know from past experiences. And for those who would like to live on another planet, this is pretty awful news. Therefore, NASA will research how highly motivated individuals react to the demands of a rigorous, long-duration, ground-based simulation in order to prepare for the real-life obstacles of future trips to Mars. Three one-year Mars surface simulations are part of the Crew Health and Performance Exploration Analog Mission Series, which is based at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. Future manned expeditions to the Moon and Mars will be supported by research into developing techniques and technology to avert and fix such issues. After this mission, we won't have the same perspective on how people behave. Everything will alter as a result. Before astronauts launch, scientists will use simulations on Earth to better understand and prepare for the physical and psychological difficulties they will face. We don't want to assume anything. We want to be aware of every detail. According to Grace Douglas, chief scientist for NASA's Advanced Food Technology Research Group at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, the analog is critical for testing solutions to meet the complex needs of living on the Martian surface. Let's thus talk briefly about these missions. Four crew members will live and work in a 1,700 square foot Mars Dune Alpha module that was 3D manufactured by ICON for each mission. ICON creates cutting edge construction technologies that promote humanity, as stated on the ICON website. ICON is changing the way that homes are built on Earth and elsewhere by using proprietary 3D printing robotics, software, and new materials. Did you know that someday all of us might reside in homes that use 3D printing? What do you believe of it? Tell us in the comments section below. The Mars Dune Alpha Habitat will mimic the difficulties of a voyage to Mars, such as resource shortages, equipment breakdowns, additional environmental stressors, and communication hiccups. For instance, applicants will only be allowed to converse through delayed lines as a result. In fact, because Mars is so far away, it takes a while for radio signals from the spacecraft to reach Earth. For instance, during the Curiosity expedition, the delay was 13 minutes, 48 seconds, roughly in the middle of the minimum, 4 minutes, and maximum, 24 minutes, delays. So you can see, there is life on Mars. Doing the experience in Alpha will be similar to what future Mars surface settlers might expect. Separate areas within the habitat for living and working were provided by the layout of the 3D printed habitat. It will resemble this in general, and this will probably be the house's interior layout. The kitchen and the entertainment room are examples of communal spaces. The crew quarters also contain a decent restroom, since we'll need to imitate that too, and, of course, a dedicated fitness area because astronauts need to build their muscles. However, why did NASA decide to use 3D printing for his Martian habitat? The solution is actually rather straightforward. 
Future communities for space exploration may be 3D printed using additive manufacturing technology, doing away with the expensive necessity of launching substantial amounts of construction materials on numerous flights. In a nutshell, the 3D printing technique because it's the most affordable. The habitat will be roughly 1,700 square feet in size and will be built using ICON's next generation Vulcan construction system, as we've already mentioned. The so-called lavacrete will be the 3D printed substance. When applied to surfaces, lavacrete polymer concretes offer three times the binding strength of regular concrete while also resisting heat shock and shrinkage. So what will the crew's duties be? The crew may conduct spacewalks, conduct research, or use robotic controls, virtual reality, and communications. We will receive a priceless result from all of these trials that will give us crucial scientific information for validating systems and creating solutions. By the way, I'm sorry for you, but you cannot run for office if you smoke or are not a citizen of the United States. NASA is seeking non-smoking, healthy, U.S. citizens or legal permanent residents. Additionally, you must be younger than 55 and older than 30. This is terrible, I know. We're going to Mars. It's really rocket science here. You must have a master's degree in a STEM subject, such as engineering, mathematics, or in a physical, biological, or computer science. Additionally, you must have at least two years of professional STEM experience or 1,000 flight hours. Therefore, if you have never flown an airplane, now is the time to do so. Candidates who have undergone military officer training or hold a Bachelor of Science in a STEM degree may also be taken into consideration if they have four years of professional experience. To establish eligibility for a physically and mentally difficult long-duration isolation mission, finalists will go through medical tests, psychological testing, and psychiatric screening. All examinations will be scheduled and paid for by NASA, along with any related costs. Do you have any food allergies? I almost forgot. A long-term mission cannot accommodate avoidances, dietary allergies, or gastrointestinal diseases, thus candidates with these conditions will regrettably not be selected. They must also be prepared to deliver desired biological samples on necessary days and adhere to the mission's offered spaceflight-like diet. Additionally, you must be in excellent health. Candidates who are taking certain drugs will actually be disqualified. Medication for high blood pressure, blood thinning, seizures, daily allergy medication, daily insulin for diabetics, sleeping aids, medication for ADHD slash ADD, antidepressants, and medication for anxiety are not permitted. Naturally, vitamin D will be given out during the missions. The spacecraft food system will contain all other vitamins. Additional vitamins are not permitted. Candidates must possess the COVID-19 vaccine and provide documentation of their complete immunization. Is there a risk of any kind? Risks of participating in this protocol may include loss of subject privacy or confidentiality, minor discomforts and low-level X-ray radiation exposure during medical exams, as well as physical injury or a very remote chance of death, according to the NASA website. The use of licensed and approved medical facilities, the use of safety devices, and training in harm prevention are all examples of mitigations. We spoke extensively about apps and Mars Dune Alpha. Let's now go over the objectives of this mission in more depth. What are you assuming? We may probably agree that getting the most precise data possible during the analog process is the key objective. The habitat will be made to look as much like Mars as is practical to achieve this. The primary crew activities throughout the analog, which included communication, crop growth, meal preparation and consumption, exercise, hygiene activities, maintenance work, personal leisure, and science work, will provide us a unique perspective on humans while discussing space missions. So when do we begin? Beginning with Analog Mission 1, the so-called Chapia missions are slated to launch in the early autumn of 2023. The hiring process started on August 6, 2021. 
The second analog mission will launch in 2024, and the third is scheduled to launch in 2025. A wonderful moment to be alive. Before we wrap up this video, we want to clarify a few key points from what we said. The first, long-term space mission planning is anything from a nerdy hobby. Of course, a lot of individuals dream of visiting Mars because they are still young. You must, however, be more than just one of the regular people at this time. Intensive study is required. You must maintain your health. You must concentrate on the important things. You must establish a goal in your mind and work towards it until you achieve it. This is what distinguishes them. We must never give up people if we're serious about becoming a species that lives on other planets. Of course, as we will do with the analog missions, we also need to examine how they behave while under pressure. The second point is that no one is perfect and that everyone is room for improvement. You might actually be the ideal candidate for a Mars mission. No matter what occurs, all you need to do is do everything with passion. You're not the only person who is improving. At the same time, and possibly more quickly, technology will advance. This implies that everyone will eventually have the opportunity to take part in a continuous trip to Mars. Time, enthusiasm, and curiosity are the deciding factors, therefore, as usual, keep it curious. Here's where the video ends, thank you everybody for watching.